Welcome to another TechIt tutorial. Today we are going to be covering the Logistics Pipes mod pack. So to start we're going to have to cover a simple crafting recipe because these pipes are semi complicated to craft just because there's an extra step in all of them. So I'll show you an example. So let's say we wanted this request logistics pipe. You put all the ingredients in, but it doesn't have an output. And that's because you have to program this logistics programmer first. So to do that, you have to set up your system. So you need a power junction for any logistics pipe system. Place that down. It has to be powered by low voltage power. So I'm using bat boxes here. This will draw energy. As long as it's got energy in there, you should be all right. And then you will need a basic pipe. And then you can connect it to this logistics program compiler, which you will need to build any of these other pipes. Once you have that connected, you have to put a logistics disk in the top left here. And then you can unlock each of these. And this kind of takes a while. It's kind of just a time sink, as many people have said about this mod pack. So I'll fast forward this. All right, once that finishes unlocking, you will unlock all of these different programs on the right, which now you have to compile, which is just a little more time. So let's say we want the request logistics pipe. Now we have to compile it. This one is at least much faster. Okay, so now we have this unlocked. So we don't have to ever unlock that again if we want to craft this. Um, if you don't see the recipe you want on this side, you're going to have to unlock it from this side. So I would recommend, you know, just every time you craft something in here, just unlock one of these and leave it to run because it takes a little while. So once we have our request logistics pipe unlocked and compiled, we can take our programmer, put it in the top right, click flash. Now our logistics programmer is uh, compiled with the request logistics pipe, it says there. And now our recipe will work. And it doesn't actually use up the programmer, so you can just reprogram this. But yeah, that's how the crafting recipes work if you were struggling to craft. And now we'll get onto the pipes. All right, so we're gonna start with the provider pipe and the supplier pipe. And basically what these are gonna do is it's gonna transfer these grass blocks from this chest to this chest, pretty simple. So this chest has our grass blocks in it, so it's our provider chest. If you wanna interact with this pipe, change any of the settings in it. You have to right click it with a build craft wrench. Here we are. So items to provide or empty for all is what it says. Basically, if you want this whole chest to provide everything inside of it, you can just leave this empty. Or if you only want a specific item supplied, then you can put that item in here. Uh, this red outline indicates it has no power. So that's why you need the power junction. So if we connect those, now it has power. And then we have the supplier logistics pipe. So this one has a few modes here. Um, so bulk 50 means it'll send 50% of the request when 50% of the request has been used. So basically if you're requesting a stack of dirt, once 32 dirt has been taken out of this chest on the right, it'll send 32 more. Bulk 100 will wait for the whole stack of dirt to be gone before it sends another whole stack. Infinite will request as much as it can until the chest is full. Partial will, will request um, any parts that are missing from the order. So let's say you're requesting a full stack of dirt blocks. As soon as this chest is at 
missing one piece of grass block. Once we put it in here, it should request it and fill up that whole stack. There you go. And then full. Um, this will request the full order once the entire order has been used. And I believe that is what each mode does, to the best of my ability. Mainly people use infinite and partial. So we'll leave it, let's, let's leave it on partial for now. Anytime you switch the request mode, you have to re-input the items to keep stocked for whatever reason. So if we want, let's say we want five dirt blo or grass blocks, we put the stack in here, and it should just request five. There you go. And then if we switch this to infinite, and request one, it should just take all 59 of these. Yeah, there they go. So that is how the uh, supplier and provider pipes work. All right, next up is going to be the request and crafting pipes. So in order to set this up, I'm gonna use a provider pipe and connect it to a chest. And this will provide the system with some wood planks. So in order to use the crafting logistics pipe, you need to hook it up to a logistics crafting table. So we'll place that over here. This is the um, logistics crafting pipe. And what you have to put in here is the input and the output. So let's say we want to make a crafting table. So we'll say the input is four wood planks and the output will be a crafting table. And you can also, if you haven't crafted the item yet, you can take the crafting uh, recipe from the right. So if we go, if we take these out and we go crafting, you can actually drag this and put it down here just uh, if you don't have the item in your inventory at that time. And then we can place the crafting table here. And you don't have to do anything to the crafting table itself, except put the recipe in, obviously. <laughs> All right, that is good like that. Obviously you can put the recipe anywhere you want. All right, so now if we place our request logistics pipe, and what this pipe does, is it allows you to request an item from the system and if you have it set up like this it'll throw it on the ground or if you have a chest connected to it it'll put it in the chest so just with the stuff we set up here we've got our wood planks with the supplier or a provider sorry and then we have our crafting pipe and our crafting table with the recipe in it so if we go here It'll tell us what we can request. So if I request one of these, even though we have zero of them, it'll say success, okay, and it's in here. So there is this nice little button here that says pop-up. So if you turn that off, you actually don't get the pop-up that says items requested successfully. So this should help us see um, the items move. So if I request one crafting table, there you go. Wood planks go in, crafting table comes out. Pretty straightforward. And if you want to request uh, just the wood planks from a supplier chest, obviously you can do that. Um, these plus and minuses down here, the single plus and the single minus changes the request by one, so up one, down one. The double plus is 10, so up 10 or down 10. And then the triple plus is plus a whole stack or down a whole stack. So we have 108, so we can go exactly to 108 like that. And then request, all of it's requested and here's our wood planks. So that is the requester pipe and the crafting pipe. And now I will put them all together and try to make, you know, just a little system so you guys can see it all work together. I will quickly go over the logistics firewall pipe. So this is a pretty basic system. We are providing 
64 wood planks to the system. Over here, we are requesting nothing. So let's say we request five oak planks. They will simply be delivered. There you go. And then if we put the firewall pipe in the middle, you can see everything goes red. That's because one of the settings is power flow at the bottom here. So first we will turn on power flow. Now it's good to go. And then you have all these options. So do you want items to be allowed through to be sorted, crafted, just for providing. And then filtered items are blocked by default. So that means any items you put in this filter will not be allowed to pass through this firewall pipe. So if I put, with this current setup, if I take these planks out, it will simply send five more. There you go. If I switch this to filtered items are allowed and I have nothing in the filter, now when I take out the wood planks, it will not send more because nothing is allowed through this pipe. Okay, perfect. And then if I just switch this back to blocked, it'll send five, as well as if I send, if I have uh, wood planks in here and I have filtered items blocked, it will not send anything. And then of course, if I have filtered items are allowed, it will once again send those wood blanks. So pretty, uh, pretty basic pipe can be useful if you don't want items going to certain parts of your factory, or if you, for whatever reason, want to turn off part of your factory. Okay, I will be attempting to create a mini factory for LV transformers real quick. You can see in here, this recipe requires some copper ingots, some wood planks, and then copper cables, and those need to be crafted as well. So those need some rubber and some copper ingots. So the rubber, to start out, I will place an extractor, energy condenser, get some sticky resin, give it some EMC, throw in some upgrades here just so it's a little faster, place my chest here, that should fill with rubber. None of that is uh, part of the logistics uh, mod. That's just uh, industrial craft for you. So this will be my rubber chest. So I'll need a supplier or provider, sorry. So now we're providing rubber to the system. We'll place our other two raw materials here, copper and wood and then give them providers. So now we got rubber, copper, and wood all supplied, or provided, sorry, to our network. And then next up, we can place our crafting. Let's just extend this network a little bit. Crafting logistics pipes here. Did not mean to do that. Okay, sorry, had to back up a step because I didn't have any copper cables in my inventory. The nice thing is with this mod pack, you can destroy stuff just with your pickaxe and it will always drop. You don't have to worry about it breaking. So we'll put our uh, lo crafting logistics pipe, our crafting logistics table. In the table, we'll put the recipe, which is um, three copper in the middle, uh, and then the rubber on the top and the bottom. And you can see it makes six copper cables over here. So for the input, we'll put three and six. And this will output six copper cables. And then next up, we'll have to turn all of that into a LV transformer. So I don't remember the recipe. I'll look here. Four wood planks, three copper, two copper cables. All right. One, two, three, four, three, and two. And we gotta put that in here as well. One, two, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Okay, this is all set up. And now we can just place a supplier, place a chest, and items to keep stock. We'll put it to partial. 
and we'll put one LV in here and there you go everything is made and just like that we have a LV transformer factory the one thing that is missing here as you can see there it goes it just dropped four copper cables on the ground and the reason is that this makes six copper cables and obviously we only use two to make one LV transformer so I'll show you again if I take the transformer out it'll request another one and you can see them just barely I'm not sure if you guys can but there's a copper cable sitting stuck in this pipe and it'll pop out in just a second there we just got four more so to avoid that you will need the last one of the last pipes here the logistics chassis so what this does is it allows you to use modules and modules do the exact same thing as their pipe counterpart except you can put multiple of them in the module or in the chassis sorry so if I place just a normal chest here I put a chassis beside it and I open the chassis you can see it has two slots here and if uh, this is a mark 2 logistics chassis mark 2 so it can hold two modules you can upgrade it as much as you want up to a mark 5 and if you place a mark 5 the only thing that changes is you can put way more modules in it so with each level you can add a couple more anyways we only need the mark 2 because we only need two modules and the modules I am going to put in this uh, chassis are the item sync module so what that does is it pulls anytime there's items stuck that don't have anywhere to go this is where it'll go and you can set it to default route so that just means if you have a default route that's where the items will go when they're lost in the network and then we can put a provider module and this will simply provide the exact same as one of these provider chests or provider pipes so with this set like this this set like this well, y you get the point anyways if we pull an LV transformer out of here now we will have four copper cables in this chest we'll get our transformer and there will be no overflow no items dropping on the ground and actually next time we pull this out it'll use these two instead of crafting more so very important to include a item sync module and a provider module in a chassis pipe just to an overflow chest I'll do it one more time just to use the last two and that's that's how simple this mod pack is just one final thing to add if you have a massive factory and a massive chest space like this and you set this to infinite it will do its best to fill this chest and sometimes almost every time actually that causes a lot of issues so if you have a massive network I would recommend not setting it to infinite but of course that is up to you if you have a small enough network like this one it should work just fine and just fill it up as fast as it can but when you get a ton more materials and a ton more uh, chests it'll start dropping items all over the place and you can see already this one is just filling with overflow because too many items are just going everywhere so I definitely recommend using partial and requesting you know even if you just re request nine stacks and set it to partial that's much better than using infinite once this chest fills up it'll just start dropping items all over the floor and it is a mess anyways that will finish this basic tutorial for logistics pipes obviously there is a lot more stuff you can do you can get uh, you know into remote orders and all of these modules you can use all of these upgrades and satellites and all this stuff but just for basic factories I built a entire HV solar array factory just using the pipes I covered here 
And that should give you a pretty good start with this mod pack. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.